to talk about synthesize. So we're going to do an anchor chart about synthesize. We're going to read a story called Rent Party Jazz. The story is a historical fiction set in New Orleans. We're going to connect what we already know about the genre historical fiction and the story setting to what they learn as we read. When we make these connections and form new ideas, they are synthesizing. Synthesizing as a strategy in which you read, you use what you know and add it to what you learn and to gain a new understanding. So we're going to do synthesizing. So I'm at the top, I'm going to write synthesize. You can't see, you can always move up. Right. When you synthesize, your thinking changes and you form new ideas. Your thinking changes and you form new ideas. First thing you're going to do is you're going to think about what I know. And you could use words like at first I was thinking
because Alex, you should be writing this down. Are you writing it down? Plus, what I'm learning. So when I was reading, I was thinking blank because of blank. which leads to, which equals to, a new understanding.
by the end, by the end, comma, I was thinking dot 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 because of dot 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 It's by the end. I tried to put end and the together in one word. It doesn't work that way. It's supposed to be the, but I tried to put the and end in one word, and that's not it. It's just the. Or the. Excuse me, I will. Probably. Is that a what? Oh, it's white. out. Some pins that have erasers. Open up our book to page 172. 172, please. Reading book. The HMH book. Seven two. All right, so we're going to look at the genre of the text first. The genre of the historical fiction. Historical fiction is a story that is set in real time and place in the past. Characters in historical fiction stories act, think, and speak like real people from the past would. Characters may use slang that was common during that time period. Authors of historical fiction might tell the story through third-person point of view. In third-person point of view, the story is told through an outside observer. Although it's not a true story, it does have a real setting and that it takes place in real time in history. 
in a real place. So we're going to pay close attention to the setting because it plays a key role in the plot in the historical fiction. Let's look at the illustrations on, um, in the story. So flip through the illustrations. Can you explain to me anything that you notice about the illustrations? Malaya? You're playing music? Okay, what else? Flip through all the pictures. What, Gabby, say that again? It looks like it's painted today. It's not the time to be asking that. We're in reading time. You can ask that during lunch. Okay, so we have people, music. Does it look like it's very colorful? All the illustrations very colorful. What about, do they look like they're happy? Yes. yes. Okay, I notice that people are dressed differently. Also, I see a horse pulling a cart and I do not see any cars. So let's see, yep, we got a horse with the cart. We got a horse back here. Looks like they're, the roads are made of dirt. Go ahead, Ava, say it. Okay. All right. So let's look at this story. Rent, party, jazz. No. We'll figure it out. The first several pages of the selection to know some of the characters and illustration how to show the All right, we're looking at, we're going to page 174. Because every morning, as the sun was coming up, Sonny went to work for the coal man. I sell my coal two bits a sack, the coal man cried out as they drove slowly down the street of the French Quarter. Sonny wished he were back in his warm bed, but he knew how badly he and Mama needed the extra money. Even though he would spend the rest of the day in school, Sonny started the day like a working man. How can you tell the story takes place in the past? All right, some of the words, okay. All right, what else? Gabby, what were you saying, baby? I said he's going to work before. He's going to work before he goes to school? Um... What about anything in the illustration makes you know that it's in the past? Like the clothes. The clothes. The, the clothes. Horses. Yep, the horses, the clothes. The houses. the houses, maybe. It says the illustrations show a cart being pulled by a horse, which we don't see too often today. The character's clothes look to be from the past, too. Also, in paragraph one, we find out that Sonny works delivering coal to heat people's homes. That's not done today either. Why does Sonny work before school? Because they need the money. Because him and Mama need the money. All right, page 175. Sonny's job was to jump down and drag the sack into the alleys. Then shovel the coal down the chute. He made 10 cents a day, seven days a week. His mother worked in a fish canning factory. All day long, she packed fancy little fish, earning a penny for each can she filled. When Sonny and the coal man strode through Jackson Square, they would hear trumpets playing, blowing their horns. The musicians played any tune people wanted to hear, hoping 
listening listeners would drop a few coins into their hats. Yeah. All right, next page. All right, 176. One morning, Sonny came home to find Mama sitting at the kitchen table. She looked like she had been crying. What's the matter, Mama? Sonny asked. Are you sick? Worse than sick, Sonny. I've been let go from my job. These are some hard times and folks aren't buying much fancy fish. Might be three, four months before they need these hands again. Sonny's heart sank. Rent day would be coming soon and the rent man didn't care whether you had a job or not. All he wanted was his money. If they missed paying the rent, by just one day, the rent man would change the locks and sell off. Hey, Mr. Hamilton, I got a question. Their belongings at the public auction. I'll get a second job, Mama, Sonny said. I'll quit. No, Sonny, Mama interrupted. I've got two weeks to find something else. You stay in school and learn everything you can, everything, so things will be better for you. After school that day, Sonny wandered through the streets of the quarter, tired and sad. There had to be something he could do to help raise the rent money. The vocabulary word that's on this page, auction. Auction means an event where items are sold to the person who offers the most money. It says, what problem do Sonny and his mama have, and how do you think they will solve it? What problem do his mama and Sonny have? His mom has no job. Yep, mama lost the job. So now they're worried about paying the rent. What um, what do they think they might, how do you think they might solve it? Uh, by, getting by getting another job. Sonny offers to get another job, uh, but mom says that she hopes to find a new job herself soon. Next page. In Jackson Square, a huge crowd had gathered around one man playing his horn. Even from the back of the crowd, Sonny could hear how fine the music was. And no wonder the music was so good, so sweet, so clear. Everybody in New Orleans knew about Smiley Jack. He had been playing his horn all around the country, even in the great jazz club up north. Smiling Jack looked like the happiest man in the world, blowing his magic horn, collecting bucketfuls of coins. He seemed so happy, Sonny felt worse about Mama and the rent money. Why does Sonny feel bad when he's listening to Smiley Jack play music in the square? He thinking about what? Thinking about his mom? What's he thinking about? About the rent money, about how uh, Miley Jack just looks so happy as he's collecting all those bucketfuls of coin. She feels worse because 
Sonny didn't have a way to make money to help Mama. Page 178. The next day, and the next, Sonny found himself back in Jackson, square after school. Smiling Jack, music was too good to ignore. Sonny always stood towards the front of the crowd, though he still felt too sad and worried to clap or sing along. On the third day, Sonny stayed until the music was over and people began drifting from the square. Hey, young man, what's your name? Smiling Jack asked as he stepped down from the platform. Sonny, Sonny C, we'll just say a poem, Sonny C, sir. You need a special tune, Sonny. You're looking mighty down. Sure wish I could get those hands clapping. I love your music, Smiling Jack, Sonny said. But a tune won't solve my problems. Problems? What kind of problems does a boy like you have? Sonny explained about his mother losing her job and about the rent man who'd put them out on the streets if they missed paying the rent. Smiling Jack suddenly looked serious. Back in Mississippi, where I come from, they did the same thing to colored folks all the time. Drifting. If you're drifting, it means you're moving slowly without much direction. But then we found a new way to fight back. Pay the rent man and have the world's best party at the same time. How'd you do that? Sonny asked. All the neighbors got together and threw themselves a rent party, Smiling Jack said. They baked sweet potato pies, fixed up some catfish and greens, then brought the food to the house where help was needed. They put out a big empty bucket too, and soon someone who knew how to pluck a fine banjo or blow a jazz horn would start playing, make people sing and dance and forget their worries for a while. By the end of the night, people had dropped enough money in the bucket to put the old rent man back in his place. That sounds like a mighty fine idea, Sonny said. But where am I going to find somebody who plays, who'll play for Mama and me, play for poor people he doesn't even know? Smiling Jack faked a frown and tapped his foot. Some people say I play a pretty mean trumpet myself. For the first time in days, Sonny smiled. When Sonny got home, he found Mama sitting near the stove. No luck again today, Sonny, she said. But I'll keep looking. I'll find me that job to keep us going. After hearing Smiling Jack's description of a rent party, how does Sonny's understanding of it change? He smiled. He became happy because he realized what? Okay. First, he didn't understand the purpose of a rent party, but then he realized that Smile and Jack will play at the party to help them raise money to pay the rent. Next page. Sonny stirred the coals with a poker trying to warm the damp room. Maybe you won't need that job right away, Mama, Sonny said. We're going to have a party tonight and raise all the money we need for the rent. Every last nickel and dime. Smile and Jack told me how to do it. Don't be talking such foolishness, Sonny. 
Even if you're just trying to cheer me up, Mama said, pulling her shawl tight around her shoulders. It's not foolishness, Mama, Sonny insisted. I'm going to prove it to you. Sonny knocked on all the neighbor's doors, told them about the party, and asked them to bring whatever food they could spare. He told them to get ready for the best music in the world. They were all going to meet the great Smiling Jack. On his way home, Sonny found an empty bucket in the alley. He put it on the floor just inside the doorway and sat down beside Mama to wait. Mama shook her head, thinking her poor son had just plain lost his mind. Why is the bucket important to the story? Because people can put coins in it when they hear Smiling Jack playing. And what is the money going to go towards? The rent. The rent. All right, next page. A little while later, Sonny and Mama heard cheering and clapping in the streets. Then someone knocked loudly on the door. Miss C. I sure am pleased to meet you. I go to the nope. Smiling Jack, trumpet in hand, bowed to Mama. Well, I'll be. I thought my boy had gone full moon crazy. Mama said, hardly believing in her, believing her eyes. I sure love your music, Smiling Jack. I surely do. Before Mama could say another word, Smiling Jack pulled the bucket towards him, raising his trumpet, and started blowing one of the Sonny's favorite songs, Bourbon Street Rag. The house and the street were soon filled with people. There was more food than Sonny had ever seen at one time, enough for everyone who was busy clapping and singing and dancing. All the neighbors had come to the party. Sonny saw the LeBlanc twins running through the crowd, and he saw the oldest women in the neighborhood, Miss Claire, Claire Vowix, sitting in a chair, tapping along to the music with her cane. What does Sonny's mother think of his plan? He's crazy. That he's crazy. He's lost his marbles. Does she change her mind? Yes, because why? Because who comes up? Smiling Jack. Which detail from the story does the illustration on this page support? Happiness. Happiness, okay, and what else? The party, everybody's clapping, there's somebody playing the trumpet, there's a bucket with coins in it. They all have a good time. They're looking, there's a lot of food, it looks like they're having a good old time. Just one thing bothered Sonny at first. He heard only a few coins drop into the bucket, but as the night went on and the party heated up, he heard more and more. At last, Smiling Jack stopped playing. Then, without any music, he started singing. When the saints go marching in, the whole crowd joined in, singing the verses. Then the beautiful chorus crowd joined in, singing the verses, then the beautiful chorus, sorry. Sonny felt like he was in another world a place where the music and the singing he loved would never stop. When everyone had left, the bucket was brimming with coins. Mama counted out the money.
Oops, sorry. I'll go to the hospital if I have to myself. I know where Grandpa's at. I know people that work at that hospital, so I can get a hold of Mama. Mama counted out the money they needed for the rent and handed the rest to Smiling Jack. I thank you much, Smiling Jack, she said. I took what I needed to see us through. This belongs to you. Smiling Jack shook his head. No, Mama, that money belongs to anybody who needs it for rent or food. I've already been paid. This was the most fun I've had in a long time. Wherever I go from now on, I'm going to play at least one rent party like this. We'll show those rent men how good folks help each other. Sonny walked Smiling Jack back to the Jackson Square. Thank you, Sonny, for one of the happiest nights of my life, Smiling Jack said. I sure hope to see you next time I come to town. I know just where to find you now. They shook hands and hugged like old friends. Why do you think Smiling Jack says it is one of the happiest nights of his life? Because, yeah, he had a fun time and what else? He was playing his music. And he wasn't just playing his music just for himself. He was doing it for other people. He was doing it for people in need. And last page. We're on page 186. Sonny walked home slowly wishing the night would never end. He was glad he was listening to Mama. If he had quit school and taken a second job, he would never have met Smiling Jack, never have learned about bringing the neighbors together for a rent party. It made him think about how much people could do for one another if they put their minds and hearts to it. Sonny figured he would stay in school and learn everything in his books and lessons. And maybe, just maybe, he'd learn to play trumpet too. Beneath the bright glow of the street lamp, Sonny swayed back and forth, pretending he could blow a mean horn. All right, let's pet look at page 187 at the collaborative discussion question. It says, what problem do Sonny and Mama have, and how do they think they might solve it? Write it down. Not the page.
Okay, we're on page 187. We're doing the first question. Okay. Thank you. Number two, it says review pages 178 to 179. How does Smile and Jack help solve Sonny and Mama's problem? And then number three. How are Sunny and Smile and Jack alike and how are they different? Okay, let's look at these questions. What problem does Sonny and Mama have and how do you think they might solve it? What problem do they have? They have to pay the rent. They have to pay the rent. Why are they worrying about the rent right now, Sebastian? Because 
Mama lost her job. All right? Uh huh. If you don't have a job, you can't get paid. And if you don't get paid, you can't pay the rent. All right, how do you think they might solve it? It's a rent party. Well, before that, before we even knew about a rent party, how did Mama say she was going to solve it? She was going to try to get a new job. How does Smile and Jack help solve Sunny and Mama's problem? By having a rent party. Alright, how are Sunny and Smile and Jack alike? Oh, what did you say? Not if you don't do your work. Okay, hold on. How are Sunny and Smile and Jack alike and how are they different? They both like music. Okay, what else? One is younger. Okay, one is younger than the other. They're both very helpful. And kind. Okay. Jack plays um, music and Sunny does not. Okay, they both, yes, they both look like they're, from the illustrations, they're both colored. Sunny is poor, but not, neither like Jack, not Jack. All right, so Sunny, at the time of the story, they didn't have money, so they are considered poor, and Smiling Jack had money overflowing his bucket every time he played. Sunny, uh... Smiling Jack is different from Sonny because he learned that helping people is more rewarding than getting money. Let's see. All right, we're going to take a 10-minute stretch break, and then we will come back for math.